In this video, we look at a simplified summary of the story Hidden Horde of the Pious Highwaymen by Howard M. Duffy, which appeared in the June 1977 issue of the magazine Long John Latham's True Treasure. Have you ever heard of Joseph Thompson Hare? Oh, how his name would have echoed through the old Natchez Trace in the early 1800s. Hare, much like his fellow highwaymen, concealed his ill-gotten gains, ensuring their accessibility when the time was right. Around Fayette, Mississippi, it is believed that the Hare Gang hit a staggering sum of $70,000 in gold and silver coins, a treasure that remains unrecovered to this day. But there is more to this tale of plunder and mystery, for it is suspected that Hare buried additional spoils as the gang's riches surpassed what a mounted horseman could bear. A perplexing enigma, Hare left an indelible mark on those who crossed his path. Though a merciless bandit, he fervently preached the virtues of a conservative existence, as if driven by an evangelical fervor. Curiously, Hare held an aversion to the rugged outdoors, preferring instead the allure of city life and elegant attire. Yet, it was his lawlessness along the trace that filled his coffers. Even as inner turmoil brewed within him, casting a shadow of melancholy upon his soul. Born on a humble farm in Chester County, Pennsylvania, Joseph Hare harbored an undeniable disdain for toil and labor, prompting him to flee to the bustling streets of Philadelphia at the first sign of prosperity. In the midst of the city's teeming crowds and the exhilaration of relying on his wit, Hare found solace and purpose. It didn't take long for Joseph Thompson Hare to bid farewell to the mundane life on the farm and venture forth to the bustling streets of New York. There he spent two years as an apprentice in a tailor's workshop. It was during this time that he developed a keen eye for exquisite clothing, though he much preferred donning them rather than stitching them together. However, the tailor's trade failed to satisfy his thirst for adventure. One fateful day, Hare found himself at the harbor, where he impulsively enlisted aboard a ship, eager to explore the vast wonders of the world. When the vessel finally docked in the vibrant city of New Orleans a month later, young Hare felt an inexplicable pull towards this mesmerizing place. Legend has it that Hare possessed a natural inclination for mischief, a true hoodlum at heart. His sharp gaze quickly discerned the carelessness of the flatboatmen and planters who journeyed down the mighty Mississippi, their pockets brimming with the riches earned from their bountiful harvests. These unsuspecting souls, intoxicated by their success, would linger in the city for several days, reveling in their prosperity. And it was during these joyous moments that Hare seized the opportunity to ply his felonious trade. With nimble fingers honed by the needle and thread, Hare effortlessly relieved the inebriated revelers of their hard-earned wealth, deftly snatching their purses in the lively and uproarious taverns. Emboldened by his successes, he expanded his repertoire, targeting the prosperous drunks who stumbled through dimly lit alleys. Hare's thieving exploits extended to the unsuspecting victims who slumbered peacefully in inns and rooming houses, blissfully unaware of the cunning highwayman who prowled in the night. Though a life of crime consumed him, Hare remained an enigmatic figure. Despite his nefarious deeds, he held steadfast to his conservative values and maintained a fondness for the trappings of city life. His heart yearned for the glamour and elegance that adorned the streets, his attire always reflecting his penchant for the finer things in life. Yet little did the world know that beneath the facade of a dashing thief lay a secret that whispered through the wind. It was said that the Hare Gang, led by Joseph himself, had concealed a vast fortune of $70,000 worth of glistening gold and shimmering silver coins somewhere along the old Natchez Trace near Fayette, Mississippi. Rumors swirled that their ill-gotten gains exceeded what they could possibly carry, leaving the imagination to run wild with the possibilities of untold treasures awaiting discovery. Thus, the tale of Joseph Thompson Hare, the notorious highwayman with a predilection for mischief and an insatiable thirst for riches, continues to weave its spell, captivating the minds of those who dare to glimpse into the shadows of history. Joseph Thompson Hare, a young man with nimble fingers and dreams of opulence, found himself in the bustling city of New Orleans. 
While other businessmen and farmers hurried back home after their transactions, Hare was captivated by the charm of the nightlife in New Orleans. His fingers, trained by his time as a tailor's apprentice, proved to be his greatest asset as he embarked on a life of thievery. With his newfound knowledge of the Natchez Trace, the northern route home for prosperous individuals, Hare gathered three fellow scoundrels and armed them for a reign of robbery and terror along the Trace. The Trace, a post road that passed through the wilderness country of the Choctaw and Chickasaw Indian tribes, was a stream of wealth waiting to be seized. As the outlaws targeted flatboats that could not return up the Mississippi due to their bulk, Hare's nimble fingers danced across pockets and saddlebags, relieving careless flatboatmen and planters of their newfound riches. Together with infamous gangs like the Harps, Mason, and Merle, Hare and his gang marked the early 19th century as the outlaw years, until their eventual demise in 1835, leaving behind rumors of a hidden fortune that still lingered in the air. Probably the sole individual who found solace amidst the treacherous 550-mile Natchez Trace from Natchez to Nashville was none other than John L. Swaney. He, the brave soul, undertook the perilous task of carrying the mail between these two towns, while others risked falling prey to the clutches of robbery, ambush, or even murder. But Hare, the cunning outlaw, was unlike any other highwayman. What set him apart was his peculiar habit of meticulously documenting his nefarious deeds in a diary. A few days after commencing his exploits on the Natchez Trace, Hare made an entry recounting a successful robbery of a group of unsuspecting travelers. We seized 300 doubloons, 74 assorted coins, and a substantial amount of gold bars, each measuring six inches in length and weighing a sturdy 30 units. Among the others, I discovered 700 doubloons, five silver dollars, 400 French guineas, and 67 unidentified coins, whose value I could only ascertain by weighing them. In total, I procured 12 or $13,000, all in shimmering gold, he recorded. One of the victims, however, pleaded that his hard-earned wealth was the fruit of his valiant battles aboard a privateer. Moved by this valorous claim, Hare returned the man's watch and a handful of golden treasures. Before long, Hare and his gang realized the necessity for a hideout, a sanctuary to safeguard their ill-gotten gains and provide refuge from the relentless pursuit of the law. Their search led them to a secluded haven in the Chickasaw Territory, just south of the Tennessee border. Nestled amidst a dense cane break, they discovered a rocky cavern. While comfort was scarce, the only respite came in the form of a spacious feather bed, although it had to accommodate four weary bedfellows. In those days, Hare found himself increasingly discontented and ill-tempered with the rugged wilderness that surrounded him. After three prosperous months of plundering along the treacherous Natchez Trace, he could bear this existence no longer. Thus, he and his band of miscreants turned their sights northward, seeking solace and amusement in the vibrant city of Nashville. Nashville was where Hare truly relished his role as a refined gentleman. To elevate his own sense of worth, he indulged in the acquisition of a slave, two splendid horses, and a stylish gig. After a while, their merry band departed for Louisville, then continued their journey down the mighty Mississippi, all the way to Natchez, and eventually reaching the enchanting city of New Orleans. Amidst their merry revelry of wine, women, and song, they ventured into the realm of gambling, unknowingly depleting their coffers. With their fortunes dwindling, they were compelled to return to the Trace, where they once again sought to replenish their ill-gotten gains. This time, they established their base of operations in a hidden cave, nestled amidst the swamps teeming with treacherous alligators just north of Natchez. Their audacious acts of robbery proved immensely fruitful, for in a mere two months, they triumphantly journeyed back to New Orleans, their saddlebags bulging with ill-gotten wealth. Among Hare's accomplices, there was one notorious for his charm with the fairer sex. Hare tolerated this dalliance until the day the comrade appeared with a young Spanish maiden lured away from the confines of a nunnery. This transgression proved too much for Hare's conscience to bear, and he sternly commanded the fellow to return the girl. Yet when the insolent rogue refused, Hare unleashed upon him a brutal thrashing, leaving him for dead. 
Fearing unwelcome inquiries, Hare hastily fled to Pensacola accompanied by his two remaining confidants. In this city, governed by the Spanish, the trio adopted airs of elegance and sophistication. However, as their coffers neared depletion once more, they resolved to return to the treacherous trace in pursuit of further ill-gotten gains. Throughout their journey northward, Hare incessantly lectured his companions on the perils of sin, all the while harboring no intention of reforming his own wicked ways. Hare's ill-fated return to the trace marked the beginning of his downfall, as fate finally caught up with the cunning outlaw. It was a drover who fell victim to his robbery, an act that led Hare straight into the cold, unforgiving embrace of a jail cell. For five long years, he languished behind bars, his only solace being the pages of the Bible and the ink-stained confessions he poured into his diary. But freedom beckoned once more, and on that fateful March day in 1818, Hare seized the opportunity to reclaim his life of lawlessness. A mail coach, brimming with riches, became his target near Havre de Grace, Maryland. With a swift hand and a heart pounding with adrenaline, he made off with a staggering sum of $16,900. Little did he know that his face had been etched into the memory of a passenger, a witness to his audacious heist. The weight of his crimes hung heavy in the air as Hare ventured into the bustling streets of Baltimore, seeking to cloak himself in the finest garments money could buy. But fate had a cruel sense of humor, and it was within those very walls that his freedom was snatched away. Recognized and captured, Hare's days as a free man were over. Legal proceedings dragged on, a desperate dance between prosecution and defense, but the outcome was inevitable. The noose awaited Joseph Thompson Hare, swaying ominously above the heads of the gathered crowd. On September 10, 1818, Hare's life was extinguished, his final breath stolen by the unforgiving grip of the gallows. Ironically, it was Hare himself who had once inscribed foreboding words into the worn pages of his diary. A chilling warning to those who might be tempted by the allure of his criminal exploits. He cautioned, let not anyone be induced to turn highwayman by reading this book and seeing the great sums of money I have robbed, for it is a desperate life, full of danger and sooner or later ends at the gallows. But even in death, Hare's legacy was shrouded in mystery. Whispers echoed through the streets, tales of hidden treasures awaiting discovery. The lost fortune of $70,000 in gold and silver coins, concealed somewhere near Fayette, Mississippi, teased the imaginations of those who dared to dream. And yet, some believed that Hare's insatiable greed had left behind even more untold riches, secreted away in the depths of caves scattered along the Natchez Trace, or perhaps nestled near the Tennessee line. As the years passed, the legend of Hare's hidden treasures grew, captivating the hearts of treasure hunters and adventurers alike. The allure of untold wealth spurred many to embark on perilous quests, hoping to unravel the enigma left behind by the notorious outlaw. And so, the question lingered in the air, a challenge to the intrepid souls who sought to solve the riddle. Would some fortunate soul one day uncover the secrets and lay claim to the long-lost spoils of Hare's life of infamy? If you're interested in purchasing a copy of this vintage magazine for yourself or as a gift for a friend or loved one, please click the link in the description.